Good evening. Welcome back to the Biostate Tour. Episode 25. If you haven't yet, then please comment and subscribe to my channel, Bison Judy Gaming. Today we're looking at John 3, and it is titled, You Must Be Born Again. Now we'll start with verse 1. We'll go all the way to verse 36. Alright. Here we go. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said, and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher, come from God, for no one can do these signs as you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time? into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said, Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Or, section 2. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone, who, for everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Section 3. John the Baptist exalts Christ. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he remained there with them and was baptizing. John also was baptizing at Anon 
near Salem because water was plentiful there. And people were coming and being baptized for John had not yet been put in prison. Now a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and a Jew over purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he was with you across the Jordan, to whom you bore witness. Look, he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, A person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one receives his testimony. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom for he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son, and has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. That was a good chapter, by the way. We shall move on to the explanations. Starting with the explanation for verses 1 through 8. Now Nicodemus, a Pharisee and ruler of the Jews, met Jesus at night to find out who Jesus was. Nicodemus knew that Jesus was no ordinary teacher because nobody could do the signs he was doing unless God's spirit was leading him obviously Jesus had the spirit of God because Jesus is God in the flesh Jesus starts the conversation saying that unless one is born again spiritually he cannot see the kingdom of God Nicodemus was confused and did not understand. So he said, How can a man be born again when he is old? He thought Jesus meant that he had to be reborn physically. Jesus was really saying he had to be reborn spiritually. Then Jesus said, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God by saying born of the spirit meaning that when we are saved Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit that dwells within us God's spirit is what makes us into a new creation and is the guarantee of the life to come Jesus uses a birth to show us how to be saved he shows that we need to to ask and admit that we need to be born again because we are we are spiritually dead in our sin this is the first step of being saved admitting that you are a sinner in need of saving we also need to confess all our sins and ask for forgiveness jesus told nicodemus not to be shocked at the words you must be born again then Jesus said, The wind blows where it wants, and you hear it sound, but you do not know where it comes from or goes. In other words, 
You can't see the wind, but you feel its effects. Jesus tells Nicodemus that God's spirit is the same as the wind. You can't see God's spirit, but you see his, but you see his effects in your life. This is also a representation of the second step of being saved, which is putting your faith in Jesus or believing. You need to believe and trust in what, in what you cannot see. Faith is defined in Hebrews 11.1 1, as being sure of what you hope for and certain about what you do not see. Now we on to the explanation for verses 9 through 15. Nicodemus then asked, then asked, how can these things be? Jesus, Jesus replied, are you the teacher of Israel and yet you don't understand these things? Jesus said this because Nicodemus knew the Old Testament and should have known this from Scripture. Then Jesus said, We speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you don't receive our testimony. Jesus declared that he was God to Nicodemus and said that, and said that you don't receive our testimony, meaning the Trinity. Jesus basically tells Nicodemus that he has rejected God's testimony about himself. Jesus told Nicodemus that if he couldn't understand earthly things, he would not be able to understand heavenly things. He also told Nicodemus that, that no one has ascended from heaven except, except he who has descended from heaven. I mean, he also told Nicodemus that no one has ascended into heaven, except he who has descended from heaven. The Son of Man, meaning that Jesus is calling himself the omnipotent God of the universe. This is one of several times that Jesus calls himself God. He's trying to help Nicodemus with his unbelief by showing him who he is. Then Jesus references the Old Testament book of Numbers where God told Moses to make to make a bronze serpent so that people could be cured of the poisonous snake bites. So Moses propped the snake up on a pole so that, so that if anyone looked at it, they would be cured. Jesus was saying, just like that bronze serpent was lifted up. So he had to be lifted up on a cross. So, so that everyone who believed may have eternal life. This is also step three of how to be saved, which is accepting Jesus' free gift of salvation. This means that you, that you accept what he did for you, which is going through an agonizing sacrificial death pay for our sins and rose from the dead giving us life eternally now moving on to explanation for verses 16 through 21 then Jesus told Nicodemus why God the father had sent him he said he came because God loved all mankind so that so that whoever believes in him should not perish in eternal destruction, have eternal life. The Son of God was sent to save the world by his death on the cross and resurrection, not to condemn the world. The condemnation of the world won't come until tribulation and Jesus' return. Also, whoever believes in Christ shall not be condemned. But if a person does not believe, he is condemned. The reason he is condemned is because he did not believe in the Son of God, who is the only way to eternal life. If you reject Jesus to give to salvation, then you are doomed to eternal destruction.
because that's your only chance of being saved. Then Jesus tells Nicodemus that the judgment of his is this. He is the light that is coming to the world. But people love the darkness of sin rather than the light because their works were evil. Also, everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not want to come to the light lest their deeds be exposed. If the evil doers persist in their sin, they will be blinded so that they cannot see the light of Jesus. If they persist in their rejection of Christ or blindness, they will die and go to the lake of fire. The darkness of sin is basically like a person with cataracts. The person slowly loses their vision until their vision is gone. The flesh is evil and wants none to do with God or doing what's right. God's spirit has to draw the person to him in order for the person to come and believe and crucify the old sinful nature. Even when a person is saved, the flesh and God's spirit will be at war until the day you die. Whoever does what is right and true and follows God's word faithfully comes to the light so that it may clearly be seen that God does this work to the believers. In other words, whoever believes and puts their faith in Christ will be made righteous by God's spirit and will do his work in the believer. God will use what he does in the believer to shine his light so that people will turn from their evil ways. Now, moving on to the explanation for verses 22 to 24. After leaving Jerusalem, Jesus and his disciples went out to the countryside outside the city to stay. While they were there, Jesus was baptizing, and John the Baptist was baptizing at Anon near Salem because there was much water. John the Baptist was still baptizing like normal because this was before he went to prison at Herod's. Now, Moving Nation, verses 25 through 30. While John's disciples were talking about purification, they told John that Jesus, whom he bore witness about, that all the people were going to Jesus who baptized him. And all were going to him. Then John said, A person cannot receive anything unless it is given to him from God. Then he told his disciples that they were witnesses to the fact that he said he was not the Christ, and that God had not sent him to repair the way. I mean, and that God had sent him to prepare the way for his coming. He also said, The one who has the bride is the groom meaning that Jesus has secured those who have believed in him, have been spoken for, and are his children. The friend of God, who hears him and stands in his presence, rejoices greatly at his voice. John basically says he is a friend of God, who got to experience the joy of seeing his Lord face to face when he baptized Jesus. John also said that the mission that God had sent him to do was complete. Then he said Jesus must get the glory and increase in fame. Well, John said he must fade out of fame. Now, moving on to the final explanation, verses 31 through 36. John continues his farewell speech by saying that Jesus, who is Lord of the universe, is about everything. He who is from earth speaks in the human way, but he who comes from heaven is above all things. The Son of God, who is the Lord of the universe, bears witness about himself, but nobody receives his testimony 
If anyone receives his testimony and beliefs and accepts Jesus as the Christ and gives salvation, then that person believes and declares that God is true. The Son of God that the Father has that the Father sent to earth speaks God's words and has been given the limitless Spirit of God. The Father loves the Son and has given him everything. We're pleasing Jesus has eternal life. But you does not does not obey the Son, shall not see eternal life. And God's wrath remains on him. That's all the time we have for the day. Thank you for listening. Look forward to more episodes. Thanks. And God bless. Good night.